What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as promised, we're gonna do a cost breakdown on the micro camper. For those of you that are new to the channel, I did a whole build series, a five part build series on building this micro camper. And then I also had a time lapse video, which probably a majority of you have seen. Uh, so if you haven't seen those yet, go ahead and check those out. And then you'll see exactly what we're kind of doing this cost breakdown about. All right guys, so I'm gonna try to break this down into sections just to kind of so you can get an idea on which areas maybe you wanna spend less on or spend more on. And also if you guys stick around till the end, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a list of all the tools that I use to actually complete this project. So first off with our metal, for our main bits of metal, it was $544. That is for two 24 foot long two by two 11 gauge and then nine of the three quarter by three quarter 16 gauge which is what we made the body of the camper out of these prices can vary uh, pretty widely depending on your location in the market anytime i've built a trailer the price for metal is always fluctuating and it's actually it's just been higher every time honestly so now that might even be a low number compared to the market i'm not really sure what you see here is other miscellaneous metal, like those gussets that I did for the body, that weld on hitch in the rear, our front hitch, and then those metal tabs for the motorcycle carrier. Obviously that's optional if you're not doing a motorcycle carrier, then that won't be very relevant to you. So overall about 631.51. And I did have a couple pieces of metal like that one and a half inch tubing I already had, so I didn't put that price in here. Uh, and plus with the fluctuating prices, it could be anywhere in or around this much just for the metal for the frame and body itself. Moving on to suspension, wheels, and tires. Uh, this is an area that you can definitely save some money on. Obviously going the timber and axle suspension route is more expensive, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. This is the third trailer I've built using timber and they're just easy to work with. And it just makes it super simple to make a custom trailer and have the axles just, you know, line right up with your build, no custom with axles or anything like that. A full disclosure, they did send me the suspension for this build. I have built two previous trailers and I paid full price for that timber and suspension. And that is exactly why I wanted to use them uh, for this build as well because of previous experience and how well it worked out. So my idler hubs for this build, 14740, and that's basically the six by five and a half Toyota lug pattern. If you have a Jeep or something like that, you can get different idler hubs. All these parts are gonna be linked in the description if you want exact on what I ordered. If you were to get trailer brakes or anything of that nature, you can go ahead and bump that number up. Trailer brakes, I think you're gonna spend anywhere, you know, $600 or maybe even more to get a trailer brake set up on the trailer. In my case, I wanted to run Toyota OEM style wheels. They require a special lug nut that has a shank on the end of it. So I had to get these lug nuts from Amazon. They were 3842. Those will be linked in the description as well because the threads on the new hubs do not match Toyota factory thread pattern. Obviously wheels and tires, this could vary very widely depending on what you're trying to run. For me, I actually already had my wheels and tires, so they technically didn't cost me anything. But you can imagine you can pick up a used set on Facebook Marketplace or something like that, a couple hundred bucks, or buy brand new and end up spending, you know, nearly a thousand dollars. So that really just kind of fluctuates. So my total for suspension hubs, wheels and tires was about 991.97. Moving on to the paint that I used, you may not coat your frame or do the same method that I did, but for the Raptor liner, I got the kit off Amazon. It was like 8731. I already had the spray gun. I'm pretty sure you can get a kit with the spray gun for like 130 or something like that. So, and then I did do their primer underneath the, the bed liner just because I really wanted this stuff to stick well, and that did work out nicely for me. I used the steel it just for miscellaneous things that had to be welded on top of basically. Uh, with that way I didn't have any raw metal sandwiched anywhere. The price, I already had white interior paint and stain for the build, so I don't have a, a pin on price on that, but you can imagine probably somewhere around $50 or so for that stuff. So total for paint and everything was $224.95. So this is lights and wiring for the actual trailer itself. This does not include anything inside of the camper. So wiring harness about 1350, and that's the harness I used from that junction box uh, back to all of our lights on the trailer itself. That seven pin harness that I used up front with that junction box that I mounted is our 3714. And our tail lights were about 17. And then our marker lights, I already had them from a previous build. They come in a bulk pack, but they're pretty cheap. So lighting about 67, 64. Our exterior, this is gonna be our largest cost, and that's just because of the doors and windows and stuff like that, and the paneling. So aluminum composite paneling, three millimeters, Piedmont plastic was about 532. I believe I got two four by eight sheets and three five by 10 sheets, and I did have some left over, but I needed something from that five by 10 sheet, so that's why I had to get three. VHB tape, that stuff's awesome. Uh, you'll know that I swear by that stuff, but it is a little pricey, but I think it's well worth it in my opinion. Uh, and then obviously this is from that vintage trailer, vintage teardrop trailer parts website. Uh, that'll be linked in the description as well. That's where I got my aluminum trim 
uh, the beetle tape, those fenders, and then the windows and door, max air fan, and then shipping for all that stuff from them was like 200 bucks, which in hindsight, all the stuff that I got from them, that's pretty good. And then our tongue jack just off Amazon. One special thing that I had didn't plan to have to buy in the beginning because I, I thought that that aluminum composite was gonna bend nicely and it ended up not. I had to get that 135 degree aluminum angle and I ended up painting it with a steel it and that was about 60 bucks. Just like everything else that is linked in the description because I had a hard time finding that stuff. So having it linked in there for you guys, I wanted to make sure. So our total for that was about 23, 45, 37. Obviously this can change depending on how many windows you do and stuff like that. But I think in general, you're gonna end up uh, roughly in this price range just to kind of fit out the trailer with some of those accessories. Moving on to our interior. We got that paneling that I used for the walls. That was about 211.86. There's a bunch of different methods you could do to do those walls. You could do quarter inch birch or anything of that nature. So this these prices can vary pretty wildly. Tongue and groove, about 166.61. Obviously that is a kind of a bigger cost. You could have done that roof in something a little more simple and actually even more lightweight. All this other stuff's just miscellaneous, uh, both the dimmers, the 12 volt plug that plugs into our battery bank, miscellaneous electrical stuff, 104.39. That's like connectors, crimpers, uh, heat shrink, braided stuff. I mean, just like, you know, miscellaneous things. You don't want to just list all that stuff. Uh, insulation and liquid nails. So about 173.75 to insulate the camper and little things like cup holder, those L brackets for the shelf random hardware, and then those aluminum panels I got from Sen Cut Sen. That fuse panel I did have in the garage already, so I didn't buy that, but those retail for about $44. So total for interior about $963.19. It could be way more expensive or it could be a little more cheap than this. It really just depends on what you want on the inside of this thing. This is somewhat of a hidden cost that somebody may not think about. These are consumable things like welding gas, welding wire, you know, your flap discs, step bits, heat shrink, uh, butt connectors, all that random stuff. And that stuff really does add up. Welding gas is rather expensive, as you can see. And obviously I have a bunch left over. And same with a lot of this stuff. I mean, you're gonna end up having excess that you can use on future projects and stuff like that. So it seems like you're spending a lot, but in the end, you still have these things for future stuff. Total on that was 787.56. And obviously this can change depending on what tools you use and all that stuff, but we'll get into the tools here at the end of the video. All right guys, time for the grand total. Maybe a little higher than I expected, but some of the stuff I did already have or it was gifted to me, so it brings down my overall price, but I wanted to give you guys a real price if you were to buy pretty much everything I did so that you know how much it is. Grand total is about 6,012.19. There are campers available for around that price range, so if you're looking to just spend that much money at once and get one, then go for it. But it was fun building a custom camper and kind of given the options that I really wanted. So in the end, it seems like a lot of money, but it's a little bit here, a little bit there, and it's a lot easier to pay for than just forking over, you know, 10 grand for something immediately, or even those things, they could be up to 30 to 40 grand. So you could get even a little crazier with this build and under $10,000, you could have yourself a $40,000 micro camper if it's within your skill set. It may seem like a lot, but I think in the end, it was totally worth it to me. Another thing to consider when doing a build like this is do you have the tools to get the job done? Here's a list of the tools that I ended up using. A miter saw, which obviously I cut like the three quarter metal with, uh, did a lot of the tongue and groove work with. Skill saw, just for random cutting the big uh, panels. Drill impact driver for doing the trim. Fireball tool square, which I think is very key to a build like this. It helped my frame is actually perfectly square. I know you guys may not believe that, but you can watch the video and I mean, I was very surprised and I'm, I attest everything to that fireball tool square. That thing made life so easy. Obviously an angle grinder, Craftsman Restore is what I cleaned all the metal with. And that thing is just absolutely awesome. It just it absolutely eats mill scale and it's the fastest way I found to remove it. The router I used to trim the edge of my panels after I stuck it to the body. Bandsaw is what I did all of my heavy cutting with on my two by two inch metal. Obviously a welder. Torque range for torquing the timbered suspension and stuff of that nature. Basic hand tools, just, you know, work with things. Uh, wire crimpers, just wiring stuff in general, wire strippers. A level, very important. That digital level I used from Klein Tools was awesome. Palm sander, just for finishing uh, before sanding and stuff like that. It's, it beats the heck out of sitting there sanding it with your hands. Paint brushes, if you're going to be painting the interior and all that. Uh, spray gun for Raptor liner, which you can get in the kit. Air compressor. So I just have a little pancake air compressor from Craftsman. It came in like a three tool kit and that was a pretty great value and that works good for me here at home. And then obviously a caulk gun. I may even be missing a tool or two that I used like some small things, uh, but this is what I could think off the top of my head. So it does take quite an extensive list of tools to actually get the job done. But once again, you buy all this stuff, 
and you can use it in the future for projects. Uh, and basically, you know, this is you're investing in something at this point. Uh, so totally worth it to have all this stuff. Really, you can build whatever you want. It's just up to you and your imagination. All right, guys, so that is a cost breakdown of the build. As far as the time that I put into the build, I didn't record every hour like I did on the other build. It would have been a lot if I had to guess anywhere between 60 to 100 hours, and it may even be more than that. And that doesn't sound like a long time if you think about a working week, but if you're putting in, you know, one or two hours every day after work or here and there when you can, uh, you can see how that project can stretch out over a while. And then plus with recording, I mean, I think it took me, you know, four months or so to build this thing. But obviously it could be done faster, it could be done slower, but no matter what, as long as you get it done, that's all that matters, right? So I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, uh, drop them below and I will answer them and we'll see you next time.